Hello, my name is Hector Velasquez and welcome to GCSAA Inside the Shop. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about proper electrical repairs. Now, we've all seen the crimp on style terminals, right? Today, we're going to be showing you how to make proper electrical repairs by soldering them. So let's get started. All right, so let's look at some of the equipment that we're going to be used for soldering. This is a kit that I purchased from Amazon for about $30 to $40 real cheap not much what i like about it is i can control the temperature on the tip of the gun as you can see i have it tinned with solder and the reason we do that is we want to preserve that tip now when you get ready for solder it's always a good idea to come in here clean that tip off and sometimes you may even have to dip it in the flux here like this and it'll really bring it to a really nice polish and check it out there you go so you always want to solder with a nice clean tip when you're done with your job you always want to retin and then put your gun away that solder will help preserve that tip and keep it from oxidizing all right let's talk about solder for a little bit there's two different types of solder that you're going to come across out there let's talk about plumbing solder this stuff is what we don't want to use it's an acid core solder the acid is very acidic it's too harsh for the electrical components. Not only that, but a lot of times it's just a thicker diameter. As you notice, it has 40% tin, 60% lead, and it has a melting point of 460 degrees. All right, now here is the solder that we're gonna be using that's great for electrical repair. Here's already some of the difference that we see from, say, the plumbing solder. This one's a rosin core. Um, the rosin is derived from the pine tree sap. So it's, it is a cleaner, but it's not too harsh. It's a thinner diameter, which makes it really easy to work with. 60% tin, 40% lead. So it's a really soft metal. And it has a melting point of 361 degrees. Perfect wire that we want to be using for electronic repair. All right, now let's talk about flux for a little bit. It's the same thing. You're gonna find two different types of flux out there. This is soldering flux for plumbing. It's an acid base. We do not wanna use this for electronic soldering. It's just too harsh of a chemical. It'll ruin components for electronics. The flux that we're going to be using, this is a lead-free tinning flux, and it's specific flux for electronic repair. Now let me show you how important flux is when it comes to soldering. Here I stripped the wire about two inches and I'm gonna apply flux just to the first half of it. Now I'm gonna grab my gun, apply some solder. Notice how it reacts. It really doesn't do too much. It just sits there. Let's have a close up look at that. Now watch as I drag this to the area that's fluxed. You see how that flux not only cleans the wire, but it helps draw in that solder. And if you need a little more, you can always apply a little bit more. You don't want to apply too much. You want to still be able to see the strands of the wire when it's tinned. This looks great. Really easy. You got to use flux. All right, let's talk about these crimp on terminals for a little bit. Nothing wrong with them, right? But we still need to tin our wire if we're gonna be using crimp on terminals. And here's why, look at this. It's crushed, we ruined it. A lot of times the terminals are not even on properly and they come loose. With these battery powered equipment that we're seeing in the market, every connection is soldered on. Here we have to replace a switch on my Milwaukee drill. I'm gonna have to take these wires off, desoldering them and then solder in the new switch. So let's show you how we're gonna do that real quick. Now, to tin a wire, I'm just gonna strip about a quarter inch on the end. Now I'm gonna keep the insulation on there. I do not wanna get my hands that's dirty onto that wire. I don't wanna contaminate that wire. So I'm just gonna use that piece of insulation, give the wire a nice little twist, keep all those strands together and it should look something like this. I'm gonna apply flux, which is gonna help clean the wire, deoxidize it, plus it'll help draw in that solder. I'm gonna take my gun, clean the tip, using my little Brillo pad here. All right, yeah, 
I think I can get it a little cleaner than that. So I'm going to dip it into the flux. Let that heat up for a little bit. Scrub it out. There we go. I'm going to apply my solder to the tip of the gun. Usually I like to start at the base and drag the tip of the soldering gun to the tip of the wire. There we go. Let's have a close up look at that. Check it out. You can still see the strands of the wire. That's a perfect tinned wire. Now to make a splice connection, you're going to tin both ends of the wire. Lay it side by side. Grab a little bit of solder for heat transfer. Touch it to the base and check it out. That's all it takes. Really quick, in and out, minimal heat on that wire. Now we want to finish the job off with shrink tubing. Lay some shrink tubing in there. Grab a heat gun. And let that tubing shrink right onto the repair. And there we have a finished professional looking repair. Alright, now let's talk about how we would work on lay a wire on say what would look like a spade terminal. So I'm going to use the spade terminal here to demonstrate this type of repair. Here we have a tinned wire. We want to tend the spade itself also. So I'm going to grab a little bit of flux. It's going to help clean that spade terminal. Plus it will help absorb and bond that solder right to that metal. Grab a little solder, lay it on there. And I want to make sure that it's just, it's all over on that spade. There we go. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit more solder to help with heat transfer. Lay it right in between the wire and the terminal. And that's it. Quickly in and out. Now we have a solid connection. Check it out. Nice and strong. All right, now to remove the wire, we want to grab a little bit more solder for heat transfer. Lay it on there. And it'll remove just that easy. Now there's going to be times where you're going to want to clean the solder off that terminal. And this is where a solder wick comes in handy. It's basically wire that's like braided like a wick. And it does exactly that. It wicks the solder off your connector. Usually I like to just kind of push it a little bit together like this. And when it comes time to wicking solder, I'd like to use a liquid flux. This is also 6040. It's just in a liquid form. To me, it just seems that it absorbs a little bit better. Let that sit for a minute. All right. Now I'm going to grab my solder gun for heat transfer. Lay my wick right over that spade terminal. And you kind of want to drag that wick across the spade terminal. Uh, it's little practice right let's like get this on here really good all right there you go you see that that wick just drew that solder right off that terminal there we go now you if you want to you can retend the spade terminal and to lay your wire back on there it's the same procedure just that quick All right, now soldering your connection is not just reliable, but it's really not that hard. I want to thank you for joining me here today on GCSAA Inside the Shop, where we're helping technicians one wrench at a time.